Hello everybody, welcome to course one, unit one, the international organization for standardization. So this is the very first unit of the very first course of our e-learning module on how we develop standards. Uh, before moving forward, I would highly recommend that you complete course one uh, for the simple reason that in course one, we will talk about some of the fundamentals, some of the building blocks that will really help you understand the content of the future courses that are available. Uh, in this module. So in this specific unit, uh, hopefully you will come out with a better understanding of what is ISO, what do we do, and how are we structured? So how, how are decisions taken at ISO? ISO is a global network of the world's leading standardizers, and the main deliverable that we publish is the international standard. It's not the only deliverable uh, that we publish at ISO. We'll, we'll, we'll get into these details in subsequent courses, but it is certainly one of the main deliverables that we publish, the international standard. Um, you may have noticed that our acronym, ISO, uh, doesn't match our name, the International Organization for Standardization. So a fun fact for you is that ISO is actually derived from the word ISOS, meaning equal. So whatever the country, whatever the language, we are always ISO. Um, the motto of ISO is great things happen when the world agrees. And in order to understand um, this motto, we actually need to understand what is our core business. So I talked about our main deliverable, the international standard, but our core business is to bring around one single table, international experts that tackle global challenges and find solutions together through consensus. So consensus is an absolutely key word that you have to remember. Um, why? Because essentially nothing moves forward at ISO without consensus. And ISO being an international standard body, we're talking here about international consensus. So it's a big challenge, but at the same time, when our technical committees and experts are able to achieve this international consensus, consensus sorry, it also means that the international standards that we publish are globally um, relevant. So when this core principle of consensus is achieved, great thing happens, uh, such as safer toys for our kids worldwide, banking cards working everywhere when we travel, safer planes uh, while traveling to our destinations, and so forth. There's a lot of examples um, out there of how standards are used everywhere. So ISO was founded uh, just after the war uh, when reconstruction and cooperation was uh, obviously uh, most needed. We are an independent, non-governmental organization. And I can't stress enough um, how much how, the fact that ISO is first and form, foremost a global network of national standard bodies. So it's really through our ISO members that we're able to get all this input uh, that feed into this international consensus that we're talking about. And so this input uh, is coordinated by our ISO members and it's also um, referred to as the national stakeholder engagement uh, process managed by our members. We'll get into more detail about this in the future courses, but it's, it's important that you, you remember this, this principle is that the inputs um, to ISO are um, driven by this uh, stakeholder engagement process, which nationally uh, is managed by our ISO member. So it's one ISO member per country, and every membership of ISO comes with rights, benefits, obligations, and good practices. So here are a few figures uh, on this day. So we're now uh, sunny April uh, 2018. So we have 161 members. We published to date uh, more than 22,000 standards at a current rate of 100 standards published each month. And these standards are produced in 245 technical committees. So if you don't know what a technical committee is, don't worry. Um, we'll get into the details of that in uh, the future courses. And these technical committees uh, have more than 100,000 experts uh, combined. And these experts uh, meet more than seven times a day 
uh, anywhere on average uh, in 2017. So um, here's a slide that shows uh, the ISO governance structure. So you'll see at the bottom left a little star uh, with the note, useful slide to remember. You'll see these in a few of our, uh, our units. So the reason why we, we, we put this star is, is we believe that it's important that you sort of keep a, a, a mental image of this slide because uh, we will refer to it uh, uh, later on. Um, and it's definitely stuff like um, content that you will, you will need to know um, as you get involved in the standard development process uh, at ISO. So we'll get into the detail of all these uh, different bodies uh, within the governance structure in uh, the subsequent slides. So starting with the General Assembly, so the General Assembly is the highest instance at ISO. So you can compare it with the shareholders of a company. Uh, it's composed of the principal officers of ISO and all the country members. So the ISO General Assembly meets once a year, usually uh, in September, and it, it meets to, to take key decisions, key high-level decisions, such as approving the annual report, the strategy, and the finances. So we talked about um, ISO members being part of the GA. So here's a map that shows uh, all the 161 uh, members that we were talking about earlier. Um, we're not going to get, so you see the three, three categories of, of, of membership that we have at ISO. So we have um, 119 uh, full member bodies, 39 correspondent members, and three subscriber members. We're not going to get into the detail, but what you can uh, remember here is that the full member body have uh, voting rights while corresponding and subscriber members uh, are observers. So I, I think at this point in time, uh, that is, uh, is the key information that you have to retain from, from this slide. Moving forward to the council. So I said that the ISO General Assembly could be compared to the shareholders of a company. The ISO council can somewhat be compared to the board of directors of a company. So it's composed of representative from 20 ISO members. Uh, some are permanent and some are elected and rotated. And as well as ISO officers and chair from, from our policy development committees. Um, their role is to appoint the TMB. They also appoint the secretary uh, general and they also develop proposal for the ISO strategy, which is approved by the uh, general assembly. The President's Committee uh, is composed of the ISO Principal Officers. So uh, we have the ISO President, the Vice President Policy, the Vice President Technical Management, the Vice President Finance, uh, the ISO Treasurer, and the ISO Secretary General. So this group essentially makes recommendations for the councils, and they also provide guidance to um, the Secretary General of ISO. Um, the ISO Council is also supported by several standing committees and they are specialized, uh, they are created and they're specialized in, in specific domains like IT, finance and, and, and so forth. There are also three policy development committees, so CASCO, CAPULCO, DEVCO. CAFCO, CASCO sorry, looks after conformity assessment, CAPULCO deals with consumer matters and DEVCO with developing uh, countries. All three uh, report to the ISO Council. The TMB, uh, which is a word that you'll hear often, stands for the Technical Management Board. Uh, it's composed of 15 members from ISO members, and the TMB members are elected for three years terms. So the GA was, uh, the General Assembly was the highest instance at ISO, um, the Technical Management Board is uh, the highest instance uh, for the uh, technical work at ISO, and they oversee the overall uh, management of the uh, technical work. That is the, the work of the technical committees. Um, some other tasks include, uh, you know, the establishment and the dissolution of technical committees, the approvals of titles and scope for these technical committees. They appoint the chairmen of the technical committees. Um, 
they are there also to resolve conflicts and appeals and they also review ISO performance regarding uh, standards development. So all ISO technical committees report to the uh, technical management board. Um, the technical committees are actually in charge of developing standards. So I'm not going to get into the details of that because we have an entire course uh, dedicated to technical committees. Um, and finally, last but not least, we have the ISO Central Secretariat or ISO CS. Um, so this is where we coordinate uh, the day-to-day -day activities um, of the standard development process. And also this is where ultimately uh, international standards get published. So, and it's also from here that I'm recording uh, this video and ISO CS is also there to uh, support the technical committees. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, I look forward to um, speaking with you in future videos. Thank you.